let's join in singing our theme chorus. Remain seated. We're on the winning side tonight. Amen. tonight we had a good crew of people working last night and uh, even today working getting things ready for Bible schools coming right up right up and we have one thing right after the other after Bible school so we're excited about first of all about Bible school and I appreciate everyone coming and working so diligently it was a great help Jim was for we had people there in the auditorium People all over, we appreciate it so very much. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we pray that you'll bless in the service tonight. Thank you, Father, again for all the workers that came and put in their time and their effort, Father, to get things ready for Bible school. I pray that it would be very successful. We'll see many soul, souls saved. And Father, I pray that hearts are being prepared already for the reception of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, bless in the service, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing a song, and then we'll have a time of greeting. Make sure you greet the visitors. We've got a visitor sitting over next to my wife there. What's his name? Andy. Make sure you meet Andy tonight. And let's stand together as we sing 459. Lead on, O King Eternal. 459. Sing it out now. Lead on, O King Eternal. another to, together tonight that we're together and let's fellowship together and let's find some folks to say hello to this evening.
that course together. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine again. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Aren't you glad Jesus is yours? Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated. Psalm 24 and verse 1, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God, amen? Everything belongs to God. It's not yours, it's not mine. It belongs to God. So when God asks us to give some of that back, it's His, and uh, He has the right to do that, and we give that back, and He gives it back to us. But it all belongs to to him. Fellowship Track League sent us this letter today. There are track suppliers, supply tracks all around the world. For the month of June, they sent, shipped to Togo 540,000 tracks, to Kenya 1,080,000 tracks, to El Salvador. 540,000 tracks, a total of, for the total of 4,051,000 tracks shipped out in June. In June also, they had 37 salvation responses, all from the United States. So people read those tracks, trusted Christ as their Savior, and then sent in sent them in that they trusted in Christ as their Savior. So he said, uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for Fellowship Track League and getting tracks all around the world and right here in the United States. And we have some of those tracks back there in the foyer. You need to take them and pass them out everywhere you go. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Ask God to bless in the offering tonight. Dear Lord, we're thankful that... Uh, you're our God and you're our Savior. We're thankful for everything you've given to us. We know that it all belongs to you. It's not ours. You've asked us to give a portion of that back, Father, to carry out your work here and to show that we realize that you've given it to us, not we give our tithes. We're just showing that we know that you've given us everything that we have. Father, we pray that you'll bless in our offerings and that our ministry might continue to go forward and we might continue to see souls saved. And we're looking forward to seeing next week, Father, see many come to know Christ as their Savior. Now, bless in this offering. Bless our people as they give, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
down here, we can still be dwelling in Beulah land by being in the Lord. Amen? And, uh, don't, what, and you know, don't live under the circumstances. Amen? Live under the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we live under the circumstances, we wet all day long. Amen? So let me invite you to take your hymn, though, 374, Whiter Than Snow. Before we sing this, let me just say, teenagers, thank you so much for being out today. Uh, tonight, we're not going to go next door. We're going to stay in here right after the preaching, and uh, we have uh, uh, some of us are going to be practicing up here for our theme VBS song. So I uh, ask you to to meet up at the piano after the uh, after the prayer time tonight. Remain seated as we sing uh, a verse of this song. I want you to think about the words as we prepare for the Word of God tonight with our special music right after this. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want you forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be. Bye. 
not the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me and the path that is my portion maybe through the flame or flood but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Amen. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Proverbs. We're in Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. And we'll look at the first three verses there in Proverbs 26. If you found your place, I'll let you remain seated there. Proverbs 26. The Bible says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so is so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for a horse, a bridle for an ass, and a rod for the fool's back. The wise study the ways of a fool. The wise study the ways of a fool. That's the theme of these verses that we're going to be looking at tonight, these Proverbs that we will be looking at tonight, the wise study the ways of a fool. Let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray that you would help us to be wise, help us as we study the ways of a fool, even tonight, to make us wiser and to be able to avoid fools, be able to stay away from fools. Father, I pray that you would uh, help us to learn your truth tonight. If there's one here that needs Christ as their Savior, I pray that they would come to Christ and be saved tonight. Now, bless in the preaching of the word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Interesting story. It was July the 3rd. Family in Delaware were preparing for a cookout. The father had prepared the charcoal and a grill outside. But he did not have any lighter fluid. And so he decided to improvise. He didn't use gas. He used gunpowder. <laughs> he poured gunpowder on top of the charcoal and then lit it. <laughs> Of course, there was an explosion. He was severely burned and taken to the hospital. You say, that is crazy. That's foolish, isn't it? That is a fool. That is a fool. The wise study the ways of a fool. Solomon tells us to avoid fools. Now, you would have wanted to avoid that fool because <laughs> if you'd have been back there, you would have got burned the same that he got burned. So, I mean, it's a tremendous illustration about avoiding fools. But you know what? We can't always avoid fools, can we? We can't always avoid them. So, the Bible tells us, and Solomon is telling us here, that we need to study the way of a fool so that we can understand them and we can know what they might do. So, the wise study the way or the ways of a fool. First of all, look at verse number one. The fool should not be given honor. A fool, the fool should not be given honor. The Bible says, as snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor 
is not seemly for a fool. The fool should not be given honor. Now, he uses some comparative language here once again, and we see that many times here in the book of Proverbs, but he says, as snow in summer. It's very unlikely that it's going to snow in the summer. And that's what he's talking about. It's very unlikely. It's almost unheard of that it's going to snow in the summer. It's very odd that it would snow in the summer. Not only is that unheard of and is that very unlikely, but to have rain in the harvest. And let's talk about rain in the harvest in Israel. It's very unlikely that you would have rain during the harvest time in Israel. And it would be very odd, it would be very unusual, and it could be destructive as well. I, I know, working on farms up in Michigan, one of the things that we would avoid when we were baling hay, they did not want to bale hay if it had rained out there. You did not want that hay to be wet. <laughs> you want it to be as dry as possible. It, it, you know, sometimes they get caught in the rain, and then they'd have to dry that hay out before they put it up in the loft. You just can't do that because it'll mildew in the inside. It'll spoil. In other words, it will spoil. Have you ever smelled wet hay spoiled? It smells terrible. But you can't feed that to the cattle. And so uh, it could be devastating. It could be devastating. And, and he's using comparative language here, and he says to give honor to a fool is unheard of. It's odd, it's unusual, and you should not do it. You don't give honor to a fool. It's unnatural. In fact, it could be dangerous to give honor to a fool, is what he's saying here in this passage of Scripture. I, I looked at the example of, in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 17, where Israel wanted a king, and God didn't want them to have a king, but they kept begging God for a king, and God... Uh, they were much better off without a king. <laughs> because if you have someone who is a king or someone who's ruling over you and they're a fool, you're in, I mean, that's the worst thing, to have a leader. Sometimes maybe you work for someone who is a fool. That's the worst thing, to work for someone, to be around someone is a fool. You don't want to give them honor. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 10, the Bible says, Delight is not seemly for a fool much less for a servant to have rule over princes. You don't want a fool to rule over anyone. You don't want to give them a place of honor. We don't want to elect fools into our government. We don't want to have fools ruling over. There's a bunch of them down there in Washington, D.C. There's some up in Tallahassee. But you know what? We don't want to have fools. Well, that's what we need to vote, amen? <laughs> We need to vote for people who are not fools because we don't want them. That's, this is exactly what he's saying. We don't want to give honor to a fool. You know, a fool is one that rejects God and rejects his word, amen? We don't want to give honor to a fool. Don't give honor to a fool. I've, I guess I've learned the hard way. Sometimes I thought, well, you know, I try to look for the best in people. I do. I always look for the best in people, and I think, you know, there's potential. I, I see potential in individuals. And, and so sometimes I've, I've thinking it would help them to grow or go forward, and I found out the hard way. You know, you know it's best <laughs> not to put a fool in a place of honor. That's just the way it is because it doesn't work. When I was thinking about a fool and a place of honor, I was thinking about, about Pete Rose. I don't know what you think about him, but Pete Rose... Now, he held some records for hitting base hits. But then when he became the coach of the Cincinnati Reds, as he became the manager, he bet on baseball. He bet on baseball. They banned him from baseball for life. He denied ever gambling for 15 years. He said... And he claimed that he did not bet on baseball. But then he came out in 2004, he came out with his autobiography. And in that autobiography, he told that he bet on baseball. He admitted to betting on baseball. He has a website, or he had a website. I, I, haven't, I didn't go to check, but on his website, 
All of this was in an effort to make money, you know. On his website, you could buy a baseball. He had these baseballs made up, and on the baseball he had printed, I'm sorry, I uh, bet on baseball. I'm sorry, I bet on baseball. You could order one of those baseballs for $299 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. $299. And here, this is uh, what the website said. I'm going to read. This is what the website said. You can get the baseball collectible uh, that everyone's talking about. Pete, Pete Rose's personal apology for betting on baseball. Newly inscribed on an actual baseball at a fantastic price. Unquote. $299 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. The Bible says... A fool should not be given honor. <laughs> a fool should not be given honor. The wise, the wise study the ways of a fool. Number two, the fool pronounces curses. Look at verse number two. The fool pronounces curses. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. What is this talking about? It's talking about a fool who pronounces, pronounces curses upon people. There are people, this goes on all the time, fools that pronounce curses upon people. If you're wise, you will ignore any curses that fools pronounce upon people. It's using an illustration here about birds, how birds... Birds will fly, they will go here, they will go there. They might land for a second here, and then they'll fly, and they'll land over here for a second, they'll fly over there. They're always flying around, and, and he's using that to talk about curses and how these human curses are just like that bird flittering here in the air. It goes up in the air, and my friend, it never lands, it never hits its target. It's absolutely meaningless is what he's talking about. It's meaningless. When people pronounce curses upon individuals or upon uh, people, they're meaningless. They pronounce curses uh, saying that this person will have bad luck, that this person will have good luck. There's no such thing as bad luck or good luck. God is a sovereign God. Amen. God's in control of everything. No such thing as good luck or bad luck. People say, people like to say, well, I, I hear people say this all the time, well, that's just bad luck. But why don't you say, listen, you know, I'm, my life's not everything that it should be, and God's given me what I deserve. Maybe that's what you should say. No such thing as bad luck and good luck. They want to take God out of everything, don't they? God is in control. You know, uh, there's no such thing as bad luck and good luck. Only a fool will listen to a curse and believe it. We have some examples in the Word of God. Remember Balak, king of Moab? He wanted to curse Israel, and so he called Balaam, this false prophet. He called him, and he wanted to curse Israel. There in Numbers chapter 22 and verses 1 through 6, uh, the Bible tells about how he wanted Balaam to curse Israel. And uh, the Bible says, And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab, on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are around about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, 
was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, and called him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of, of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Now, Balaam couldn't curse the people. He couldn't curse Israel. In fact, the fact is, he said only God can curse them. Well, I can't do it. In Numbers 23 and verse 8, look what he said. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? That verse right there tells us that God is in control. Amen? God is sovereign. God is a sovereign God. God is in control. My friend, man can't curse. Man can't do that. He can't make you have bad luck. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5, Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Did you know that Goliath cursed David? Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 43 and 44, And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air, to the beasts of the field. So what happened with his curse? He lost his head over it. That's what happened. God had a different plan. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and ver verses 49 and 50, And David put his hand on his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. There was no sword in the hand of David. You say, what do I do when people curse me? What do I do? My friend, don't do anything. You don't have anything to worry about. Unless you're a fool. If you're a fool, then you'll worry about it. But if you're not a fool, if you're wise, my friend, it, it's nothing. It's meaningless. I had someone come into my office, came to the church service, and they came in my office. They were all desperate and upset. He said, I, said, I just don't know what to do, Pastor. I just don't know what to do. I said, what, what's, what's the matter? And they said, I've got this letter. And I said, well, what's that letter? So they, they said, just read it. Just read it, Pastor. Just read it. And I opened it up, and it was a chain letter. They said, well, I have to send this out to, I don't know if it's 10 or 20 people. If I don't send this out, I'm going to be cursed. I've got to send it out. I said, can I have this letter? Yeah, you can have it. I go, <laughs> They were worried sick. They were going to be cursed if they didn't send out 10 or 20 letters to somebody else, to other people around. They were going to send them to you, by the way. <laughs> well, the church list send them out to all the church people. Listen, unless you're a fool, don't worry about it. Amen? They're meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. There's nothing to worry about. If you're wise, you'll understand that. And that's what the Bible, that, that's what that verse is saying right there. It's nothing for you to worry about. They're like the birds flying around. That's what they're like, those curses. Here's an interesting one. A young Indian woman from India in Calcutta, India, was afraid because she was not married that she had a curse upon her, so she married a goat. She married a goat. Now, she could have married a plant, but she decided to marry a goat. She married that goat because she felt like, because they're teaching, so if that evil spirit came and killed that goat, thinking that it was her husband, then she could still get married later on to a real husband, not a goat. I'm not making this up. You can't even make this up. 
so that the curse would no longer be upon her so she could marry a real husband. <laughs> so she married a goat. But it says, I, I mean, the, it said that she could have married a plant. They marry plants. They do all of kinds of things. Of course, they believe in reincarnation, you know. That's why they do that. But I, because of a curse. Listen, folks, we don't have to worry about it. You get a chain, let it throw it away. Don't worry about those things. Someone curses. Don't worry about those things. That's what the Bible is saying there. We don't have to worry about those things. The wise study the ways of the fool. That's why we need to study the ways of a fool. That's why we're studying the word of God here tonight. The fool should not be given honor. Don't give honor to a fool. Don't give him a place of honor. Don't give him any honor. Secondly, the fool pronounces curses. Don't, uh, th they're meaningless. And then thirdly, the fool needs to be constrained. Look at verse 3. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. A fool needs to be constrained. Just like a horse and a donkey are constrained, they're constrained with a, you constrain them, that word constrain means to compel or to motivate. You constrain or you motivate, you compel a horse uh, with a whip or with a bridle, a horse and donkey. How do you compel them? How do you make them do what you want them to do? With a bridle or with a whip is what it's talking about there. That's the only way that you can compel them and get them to do what you want them to do because they're stubborn. They're headstrong. And so what he's comparing here is a fool. He said a fool has to be constrained to get them to do anything. You have to compel them. Why? Because they're stubborn. You can't reason with them. If I said, ask how many know a fool, you can't reason with them. You try to talk with them, you can't reason with them. They're stubborn. They're uh, headstrong. They won't listen to what you have to say. And that's what it's talking about there. There's no reasoning with a fool. <laughs> you can talk with them and talk with them. That's the expression, talk with them till you're blue in the face. There's no reasoning with them. Psalm 232 and verse 9, the Bible says, Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto, unto thee. I thought about those prisoners that, uh, and people who uh, go to jail over and over and over. I was watching the news yesterday and they were talking about uh, a number, some people that they caught in, uh, in this area and they were telling about how many times these people have been arrested over and over and over and over and over again. And I thought, those people, I thought to this, about this passage, those are fools, you know what? They're just fools. Because you can't reason with them. They're, they're hard-headed. They're, uh, uh, they're stubborn. You cannot reason with them at all. I, when I was in high school, my father bought a horse for my sister Tanya. And I tried to talk him out of that. My brother Doug was in college. I was there in high school. And Dan and Tim, they were just little knotheads and little. And, <laughs> and I said, Dad, I'm going to end up taking care of that horse. And I don't want, I, don't, don't get that horse for her. I, I don't want to take care of that horse. I said, in the middle of winter, I'm going to be going over to the barn across the lake and taking care of that horse, and I don't want to do it. Well, my sister had him wrapped around her little finger, so I bought her that horse, and I did have to take In the middle of winter, I had to go over there because nobody else would go over there, take care of that horse in the barn across the lake. But I got on that horse one time one time. Everybody's taking turns riding that horse. Gary, aren't you going to ride it? Okay, I'll take a, I'll one ride, one ride. I got on that horse. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything. I kicked it. It wouldn't do anything. It just, it just sat there. 
And I'm sitting on that horse. Okay, I'm on the horse. I got on the horse. You know, everybody's saying, get on the horse, get on the horse, Gary, get on the horse. I'm on the horse. It's not doing anything. And then all of a sudden, that horse just took off. <laughs> Woo! And I went running, uh, riding on that thing. And we had willow trees. We had a, a lake, and we had willow trees all around that lake. That thing took me through every one of those willow trees. Kind of knocked me off. I had scratches all over my face from hitting those willow trees. It wouldn't do anything. I, it I, didn't matter what I did with those reins. It would not do anything. It ran all the way over the other side to the barn. The barn was all the way on the other side of the lake. Took me all the way over. I got off that horse, and I said, I'll never get on that thing again. That's a stubborn thing. But I understand this passage perfectly, you know, because of that horse. That's the way a fool is. A fool is just like that. You can't even reason with them. And that's what the Bible is saying. You cannot reason with them. The wise need to study the ways of a fool so we can understand them. We know how to deal with them. Interesting story in Alberta, Canada, two farms next to one another. And the, the one farmer, years ago, the one farmer's name, the first name was Paul, and the other farmer's name was Oscar. And Paul went to Oscar one day, and he said, we need to build a fence between our farms. And Oscar said, well, I don't want to build a fence. He said, no, we need to have a fence between the farms. And Oscar said, well, you can build it. I don't want, I don't want a fence. And so... Paul built the fence by himself, a half mile, built this fence, a half mile fence. One day Oscar saw Paul over there and he said, say, he said, boy, we have a, we have a nice fence, don't we? Paul said, what do you mean we? <laughs> he said, that's my fence. He said, and I built that fence and he said, I, I had him put it two feet on my side of the property. So two feet uh, on the other side of my fence is my property. And he said, I'll tell you this. If one of your cows get on my property, I'm going to shoot it. Oscar said, I knew that he meant business. <laughs> I knew that he would shoot one of my cows. And so I had to build a fence. He built his own fence. Paul had his fence, then Oscar built his fence. He got two fences running a half mile down between these two farms. Two fences. That was a number of years ago. Both Paul and Oscar passed away. But you know what? Those two fences are still there. They said it's a tribute to their stubbornness. People go by and see those two fences and they say that's how stubborn those guys were. You know what? They were fools, weren't they? That's what a fool is. A fool is stubborn. We need to understand these things. The why study the ways of a fool. Now we're to try to stay away from fools. You can't reason with them. They're stubborn. They're headstrong. You probably tried to deal with people who were fools, and you can't get any place with them. That's why we need to study the ways of a fool. The wise will study the ways of a fool. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed. The fool should not be given honor. The fool pronounces curses. They're meaningless. Only a fool would listen to them. The fool needs to be constrained. They need to be compelled or they won't accomplish anything. You can't accomplish anything with them. Now, here's a question for you tonight. Are you being wise when it comes to fools? Are you being wise when it comes to fools? Or would you say, you know what? I need to be wiser when it comes to fool fools. I need to be wiser. Would you pray for me tonight? I need to be wiser when it comes to dealing with fools. Would you pray for me tonight? I need to be wiser. Pray that I would be wiser. Slip your hands up all through the building. I need to be wiser when it comes to dealing with fools.
Thank you very much. I need to be wiser. I need wisdom. Now, let me ask you this. Here's another question. Do you sometimes act foolishly? Do you sometimes act foolishly? You say, you know what? Sometimes I have. I need to be wiser so that I won't act like a fool. Would you pray for me tonight? I need to be wiser so